on Zoom. You're good on my camera. Okay. I'd like to call to order this Town of Dighton Board of Selectmen meeting. It is Wednesday, November 15th, 2023, and it is 6.34. This is a hybrid meeting via Zoom and in person. We are at the Council on Aging Prime Time, 1059 Somerset Ave. Um, public input may be provided using the following methods. You can contact our office at Board of Selectmen at Dighton-Mass.gov to provide input prior to the meetings um, via Zoom call and by phone. See information above. I'm sorry. Continue play on Dighton Channel 9 and on YouTube at www.youtube.com dash town of Dighton. This meeting is being recorded. The listings of matters are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed, and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. At this time, can I ask that we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Um, and then can I just have us stay standing afterwards for a moment of silence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Since our last meeting, the following residents of Dighton have passed. Maureen Bacon, John Bassett, James Duja, Anita Masella, John Torres, and Mary Rebello. Our thoughts and condolences go out to their families at this time. Do we need to do a roll call? No. We no. Don't. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to open the hearing? So move. Um, and hold on, that used to live between two of us. <laughs> do, okay. do we, we second that? that? Uh, <laughs> yes. I'm gonna step down and second down. that. Second, yeah. Um, and then I second that. Can I get a vote? Aye. Nicole Mello, aye. No, we never closed. No, we didn't. Crazy just used um, the tax classification here and, and make a special order. Oh, okay. Uh, just state what where we read the others were the district, you now you state it's the town of Dighton. Right. What? You <laughs> this classification hearing is to set the tax rates for the town of Dighton, residential and commercial. And the Board of Assessors is part of the Okay. So we should be good to go. Do we have a presentation from Mother Board of the Sexes? The PowerPoint is set. Oh uh, yeah, I can yep. I can pull it up online. And we can work out that. Scroll through it and um, yeah, when we get yeah. talk, yeah, but it's not. We make the presentation. That's okay. Um, 
So, so this meeting is to set the uh, tax rate, uh, which is the split of the value between uh, residential and commercial property. We'll advise you the excess levy capacity and present additional information, including property assessments, new growth, and projected taxes. Um, do you want me to go over commonly used terms, or can we just skip this account? Yeah, yeah, like you. Uh, yeah, like either way, like whatever, yeah, like whatever. Well, it's, it's what the board is selecting. Do you guys you, want me to Do you guys need? I've already reviewed it. You did, okay. Yes. yes. Right. So we can skip the terms. Okay. Okay. And just for anybody that's listening um, on television or Zoom, um, this information is all available on the Dyke website. So yes, you can see this packet uh, exactly as presented here. Um, so we're going to uh, determine, the, as I said, percentage uh, for the tax levy uh, each class of property. Uh, minimum residential factor is determined by the market of the tax base. This factor allows the Board of Selectmen to shift the burden um, to a maximum of 1.75%, and we'll be talking about that, I'll be talking about that in detail in, at the end of this. Um, the important to know that whatever number that the Board of Selectmen chooses this evening is not going to change the total amount of taxes collected by the town. This only determines who pays the taxes that have already been determined by town meetings. Uh, it's a uh, minimum residential factor, as I said, is up to 1.75%. Um, I would not use those, we revised these numbers that's on this slide, um, and we should go on what's on the Excel spreadsheet to get into. Okay. So can I skip that page please? Um, this page of the picture is, uh, I found this very interesting when I went through this because we've often heard the phrase that Dighton, and I've even, I may have even said the phrase that Dighton has the highest, highest tax rate around. However, when you combine the tax rate with the valuation of properties, we're actually kind of dead center as far as how much we are paying in taxes. And this chart shows that. Um, this chart is showing the uh, classes, the current values, and percentages. Um, I think I'm used because I can't. So 88% of our stuff is residential, 2.37% is commercial, as well as industrial. Personal property makes up 6.95%. So obviously the vast majority of our property to tax, or our levy to tax, is on residential properties. Um, what do we do to change the assessed values? We require it by the Department of Revenue. Um, to review, to assess the property at 100% full fair cash evaluation. That means that our, test, our assessed values have to reflect, reflect the market value of what prior properties are actually selling for. If we did not value them at market value, they would not be approved by the state. The maximum allowable levy uh, for the fiscal year of 2024 is $22,337,362. Um, and this includes the previously approved debt exclusions of 611644. Six, I should have brought my glasses. I didn't know I was reading halfway across the room. Um, yeah, you'll find our new growth was certified and approved uh, to be 398000 Now, this number is $398,000 in taxes, correct? Mm -hmm. um, so that's not the value that went up, that's the amount that we are collecting off of the new growth. And from that, um, 202 yeah, two. is from uh, upgraded inventory, and 195 is from real estate. Thousands. <laughs> I read now. Okay, now that <laughs> chart. Now you can refer to what's in front. Oh, that's this. Yeah, that's and this. Uh, we're going to be, and there's a new, there's a new one. So. Make that one go away quickly. Yes. <laughs> it's not correct. Is that the last page? It is. Oh, yes. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Um, so you have the. Yeah. yeah. Does I want to make sure all the board of selectmen have the correct one. The number to look at is the um, 
The levy number over here should say 2219456832. That's the correct one. 2219456832. That's the correct one. Yeah, okay. um, so if I may, um, go ahead with the recommendation, or if you have any questions about the presentation. Um, any comments? Well, last year there was a slight shift to the commercial. Yeah, it, any high on the commercial side. If, if I may, let me get, let me go over the recommendation and why, because it's very okay. different from last year, as you just said. Um, so what we've seen here, uh, so first of all, the, the tax rate, the current shift is 1.67, that's right. last year. So if you look at this top column, that's where it tells you what, kind of what the current situation is, with the average property being $416,000 with a 1.67 shift factor, ending up with a rate of $13.94 and a tax bill of $5,809. Now, what happened there, if you look at what happened between fiscal year 2023 and fiscal year 2024, the average single value, sorry, the average single family residential property value went from $416,000 to $455,000. So it went up by 10%. Okay. Now, if you go to the column on the right, and you see that the commercial property went from 384910 to 386000 it only went up by $2,000. So there's, basically what we're looking at is there was a massive jump in residential property value and a small increase on the uh, commercial property. So if we were to maintain the same, but we kept 1.67. If you look on the chart here, it's about mm, almost two thirds of the way down the page. Mm -hmm. You'll see that that's going to result in an increase on the residential side of $490 for the year. But on the commercial side, they would get an $80 tax cut. This is entirely because of the giant leap in property values right. on the residential side. So for this reason, and the Board of Assessors, we've all discussed this and it is unanimous, and, right. um, that we are recommending that we go to the maximum allowed split of 1.75. And our reasoning for this is because at 1.75, which is easily seen as the last line on this chart, you will see that the residential increase will be $417, and the commercial increase will be $390. So what that means is that taxes are going up. Um, right. We have a, and I want to, one more thing I want to talk to you about, about that in a second, but taxes have gone up significantly because of the money that was spent at town meetings. And because of that, we've got to bear the burden. But if we don't change the tax shift, that burden is going to be disproportionate proportionally taken by the residential uh, people. So by, by chaining it to 1.75, which is, by the way, this is the maximum. This is as far as we can go. We can't go any higher uh, for next year or the year after. This is as high as it goes. Um, it is a fair balance between residential and commercial. Um, I also wanted to mention that about, you know, how much are we taxing? Um, there is, we are actually almost at our levy limit. Um, so for those that may not understand Proposition 2.5, Proposition 2.5 is what sets our levy limit and the maximum amount that any town can charge for taxes. Now we have for a number of years been at a point where we have been well below the amount that we can charge. This year, is going to be the last year that we're going to be able to make a big tax increase. This is like a big, say it was a six point something. Six, six point six. Six point six percent tax increase. We're not going to be able to do that next year. Next year it's going to be two and a half percent. End of story. Hard stop. So this is going to need some tough decisions. And why is it a two and a half percent? Because the two and a half percent 
property, prop two and a half. What that means is there's a maximum that, that sets the ceiling. And every year that marches up by two and a half percent, plus any new growth or new, like, like somebody builds a new house or whatever, that's not counted as part of that calculation. So that number goes up by two and a half percent every year, regardless of what we actually tax. So we have been actually taxing significantly under that limit. And as and what I was just saying, saying to the Board of Selectmen is that as of this year, we're hitting that limit. So we can't go any higher. Well, it seems to me my taxes go up a lot every year. Unfortunately, and, and I was in your seat of several years ago and, and was told that, and correctly so, that this is not the appropriate venue for that because where we set the taxes, how, like I said at the beginning of the outset, our taxes are not set by this meeting. Our taxes are set by town meeting where people decide on what they're going to spend. Here we are simply determining where the balance goes. And what I'm advocating for is the least amount of effect on the residential properties. Okay? And then when you add in, that is excluded, like say for the BP or... Uh, that isn't here yet. But right, but I'm sorry, but like for the police station and all that, did that go... That is in here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's all I have, unless you guys have any questions. Any questions from the board? Just an observation. Outstanding presentation. It was clear, easy to understand. The PowerPoint is completely Stephanie's. I was just reading, so yes. thank you. I'd like to say, for the record, too, Stephanie did a great job. With great job. This yes. 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 As good as it's been for the town, so people can understand it and ask questions because it's easy to understand. If not, and they can come to us and ask more questions. But nice job, Steph. Nice Thank job. Thank you, Steph. Yeah. Very nice. So the Board of Assessors has to take a vote on a recommendation for you before you guys do yours. So um, do we need an actual vote? Can yes. We, okay. we do. Okay. Um, so I will make a, a motion that the this board recommend to the Board of Selectmen for FY uh, 24 that the split be 1.75 for residential, and which would uh, equal an uh, estimated increase in taxes of $417.85 per year, again residential, and a 1.75 split commercial, which would mean an increase of $390.79 annually. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Madam Chairman, I would like to make a motion for the town of Dighton to adopt a residential factor of 1.75 and a commercial, industrial, and personal property factor of 1.75 for fiscal year 2024. I'll step down and second that. Can we get a vote? Aye. And I step down and I deny. And the motion passes. Just to be clear, there's one rate. It's 1.75. They're, they're not second. Right. right. Okay. Can I get a motion to close the hearing? Uh, I would like to make a motion to close the hearing with the Board of Assessors. And I'll step down and second that and vote. Aye. Aye. And the motion passes. Motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Aye. 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 Yeah. We are adjourned. Aye, aye. Mm -hmm. Thank you very Thank much, Thank you for coming. That was quick. All right. So we have Shara Costa, town clerk. Um, update on, uh, did I say your name right? Mm -hmm. And practice. <laughs> and on, on town clerk's office. Oh. Awesome. Do I have to stand up? <laughs> it's, it's entirely up to you. This is a... Yeah, it's and kind I, of a small little meeting. Odd venue. <laughs> I was expecting to have a podium. <laughs> <laughs> We're not fancy. Just kidding. Um, all right. So I will. Yeah. It's because the board of assessors is here. It's all low, low rent. <laughs> 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I will start. I first of all want to say thank you and good evening. I'm here to kind of give an update on the happenings in the town clerk's office. 
I have been um, the town clerk now for three and a half months. It seems like a little bit more because we've gotten a lot done. Um, first, I wanted to discuss what we have done to get ready for elections. We attended the MTCA, which is the Mass Town Clerks Association Conference in Springfield. The focus was all about elections. We went over election equipment, election rules and regulations, what needs to be done before, during, and after each election. We also attended the Tri-County Clerks Association meeting, with the main focus being on poll pads. And if you're wondering what poll pads are, <laughs> I will tell you. These are electronic check-ins for voters. This takes place of all the paper check-ins. They're amazing. They are more accurate and much faster. Each poll pad prints out a receipt that gets kept as an election record, the same way we currently keep the paper records from the check-in books. It eliminates the reams of legal size paper that each election worker has to go through. They are the size of a recipe card, probably a li little smaller, the receipts. It's as easy as entering the first three letters of the voter's first name and the first three letters of their last name, or it can be read from a driver's license. They check you in and are able to tell you if you have already voted and if they are in the correct precincts. They count how many check-ins you have real time and are able to be matched with the DS200, and this confirms real time and if they are on the same count. Out of 351 cities and towns, most are moving toward using the poll pads. Most of the surrounding cities and towns use them currently, including Freetown, Taunton, Rehoboth, um, just a few. So, you know, they are absolutely fantastic, and I will keep talking about town. <laughs> Um, we also attended the special town meeting on October 30th. We had 96 voters attend. We had seven election workers plus Ashley and Becky. It is not a norm to have the clerk step in as moderator, and that was interesting, <laughs> and gives me a whole new perspective on that position. It was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> to say the least. I ended up approving the appropriation and certifying the minutes um, to be posted this week. We attended the training and taunt with the elections director, Mark Pacheco, and then we were able to work the November 7th city election, which I might add, Becky and I rocked it, and I was very proud of us. We opened and closed our precinct. The day went very smooth and we had zero issues. State and town committee nomination papers were due to us by Friday, November 10th, and we were able to certify and return to the petitioners before the November 17th deadline, and everyone has picked up their papers and in the amount of time to be able to forward to the state by Tuesday the 21st. We are now currently receiving initiative petitions for several potential initiatives that may go on to the presidential ballot in November for November 2024. We are verifying voter eligibility signatures through the state computer on thousands of papers. Currently, last and not least with the elections, <laughs> we are anticipating lots of changes from both the state computers and the vital records that are now attend and we're now actually attending online classes for that as well. And just a little bit of what else we've been working on. We've been working really hard in our office. Some of the other projects that we have been working on have been we've spent a lot of time going through our cemetery files and maps for the active cemeteries. We updated and went through old files and created new filing system and new mapping system. We have created SOPs, so the process is more streamlined. 
Tom Ferry was actually a really big help to us for this. We also ordered new dog license registration forms and tags, so we are prepared for the January dog licensing. Now that we are fully staffed, we were able to catch up on backed up rabies certificates, which was a lot. <laughs> we now have a process in place. When these come through, it is going to be more streamlined and organized. Applications will again be sent out with the census. And speaking of the census, we will be sending out our final draft next week to the mass mailers for the 2024 census street listings. The census is extremely important for voting purposes. If you do not fill out your census, you, are not, you actually are an active voter, and then you actually have to fill out a voter affirmation form. Um, it is very easy to fill out, all they have to do is come to the warden, whoever the warden would be, and show their license, fill out this um, affirmation, and then they're able to vote. We also deal a lot in public records requests on any given day. Some examples of requests we are getting are genealogy requests, voter records requests, and conservation and permitting requests that we have to reach out and get the information. We have public request forms, both online and in the office. As you know, they have to be completed within 10 days. And we do get quite a few weeks. We ordered archival sleeves for our VITA records for the births, deaths, and marriage certificates. We have birth records from the late 1800s to the mid 1900s that are sitting in a box and need to be placed in archival sleeves for pre um, preservation purposes. This is our next big project, because it is quite a bit. We now have the town policies merged in one system, and Ashley has been working diligently, making sure everyone is in compliance, which includes the code of conduct, anti-harassment, social media, tobacco, smoke, drug-free workplace, etc. And the conflict of interest is now just online. We are working on a project which Becky has been working diligently in getting all appointments up to date and in one place so it's more streamlined and now searchable. We have also recently created a town clerk's email. This email will be for police traffic tickets that we end up getting, Unipay, and we will eventually have all meeting notices go to this email. It'll now be the town clerk at dighton-ma.gov, and this will be good for the fact that if I'm not here, Becky and Ashley can look into this and, and do their part, or vice versa, so we can all work together. And lastly, I would like to say I am truly loving my position as a town clerk. It is extremely rewarding. I am fortunate to work with an exceptional team, Rebecca Mello and Ashley Dagnall. With our collaborative spirit, I know we will continue to drive our success. And that is my update. Thank you. And I just want to mention, you did a fabulous job at town meeting. That was a difficult, that was a difficult one. And you, you, you handled it very well. Good job. <laughs> very happy to have you on board. You've done a wonderful job. Thank you. I, I do ask. Yes. Regarding census forms yes. not returned. And I know when the census form goes out, mm -hmm. there is a letter explaining what could happen if they're not returned. Correct. I, I would ask, if at all possible, that the clerk, clerk's office send a letter out to any voter who does not return their census form explaining that their name has been dropped from the rolls. So as a result, you're sending out the census form with a letter, mm -hmm. they don't return it, a second letter would go out, they can't say they didn't know. Correct. I wonder if we can, to save on the budget, because I'm very frugal with my budget, <laughs> um, I'm wondering if we can have that posted 
to the website as well as maybe on um, social media, um, the, our board, something like that to save um, on postage. Do you have a lot of people who don't return them? You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how many we end up getting um, originally and then they kind of trickle in. Um, but what I fear is that the new census will go out and we do have a March <laughs> um, presidential primary, which is a big election. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be prepared for that. I can definitely look in to see how many we get in, how many that um, are still waiting, and maybe see what the, um, how many we would have to, reminders we would have to send out. Oh, Great. Good idea. So we'll move on um, to Pat Gales, Chairman of the Dayton Historical Commission, um, to speak on the 250th Anniversary Committee. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, basically, I'm here to remind you that you have to um, select one of the selectmen to be on the committee um, as a designee. <laughs> So the committee is you know, celebrating the 250th anniversary of the United States of America. Um, I'm seeing a lot more online. The Revolution 250 is the Massachusetts um, state group, and they have uh, quite a few events already planned and a lot of information about um, upcoming events. The next one is that I'm really excited about is December 16th is the Boston Tea Party, and they're going to be reenacting the Tea Party. Um, so hopefully um, we'll have some information about that on the Facebook page for the Historical Commission. We are making progress as far as the um, people to be on the committee. Um, I definitely have a yes from the town historian and a yes from the veterans agent, Ray Haig. I know that um, the community church is meeting tonight um, and it's on their agenda. Uh, the Historical Commission is aware of it, so there's a couple of people that um, are kind of considering it and will let me know if they would like to be the, de uh, the person for the Historical Society, I'm sorry, the Society. The Commission hasn't designated anyone yet, um, but they will in December. Um, and I've been talking to, um, oh, and also I had a contact with the um, Minutemen's group, and they're meeting in November too, and which month they will get back to me, and there is some interest there of people joining us. Um, and we also need a department head that you, you as a selectman would designate. Um, I've talked to a couple of people in town, a little arm twisting <laughs> for one, um, that are considering it too. So uh, we're making progress. I'd really like to have everyone on board like December so that we can meet in January to get going. Um, there's a lot of information out there. Um, and I just wanted to clarify, the only ones that have to be appointed are the ones... Uh, the three... At large. Community at large. Yeah. Yes. And they would fill out the volunteer application? Yes, exactly. And then, uh, yeah, I can, uh, and then as you mentioned, the board just, the board just doesn't want their own. Right. Uh, yeah, like, and then one of our department heads. And well. then everyone has to be sworn in at the end of the Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I'm just here really to remind you that you need to make a decision who it's going to be. I'm like the squeaky wheel, you know? <laughs> Peter's not here, so I think. <laughs> um, could we put that on the agenda for the next meeting? Absolutely. Thank you. Nancy? Um, I was cleaning up some stuff, and when I did the book for the Towns 300, I came across this. I don't know if you've seen this or not. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Pass along the Board of Selectmen and another, uh, another group of town officials actually did a reenactment, and they're all listed here who who the, um, let's say the key players in town were 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll read this in, in. Is that from 1962? 
No, 62 is the 250th. That's, yeah, okay. This is the 200th. The 200th, okay. Right. Okay, 1976. When I did the 300, yeah. I got tons of stuff. And I returned most of the stuff that was loaned to me. I happened to find this, and since I saw your agenda, I thought, well, I'll turn this in, and you can look at it and pass it on to uh, uh, the commission to see if this is something they might want to do. Um, as I said, I know most of the play is in here. I was around for this one, too. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to mention was I saw in the, uh, I think it was uh, where you listed the committee members. Yes. My question was, why is there only one church represented? We have at least two other very historic churches in this town, the Brick Church and West Dighton. And although that may be the oldest building, I don't believe it's the oldest congregation. When I was doing research for the 300th anniversary book, I keep thinking Brick Church might have been the successor to Buck Plain, but that's something that needs to be checked out. Yeah, there. so there's, the first meeting house, and that one burns, the one on Elm Street. And um, the second one was the Buck Plain, that one burns. That, you're right, that at the same time that the, that congregation was going to the Brick Church, um, the Unitarian Church, the community church is established. Um, so they're kind, and I think that congregation doesn't really get back into the flow of things until later on. What was pointed out to me, I don't belong to any of these churches, but what was pointed out to me was, number one, there are congregations that, plural, that would be older than what's at the community church. Again, this is gonna to have to be researched, but I think the fact that at least there were two other very historic churches in town that were successes of what was and what burned down. That should be looked at, and, and maybe the three churches together might do something or whatever. It's, I just think it's important that, since this is a historical uh, event that we're celebrating, um, West Dighton and Brick uh, at least should be somehow looked at, just for the historical. Uh, and and they, may, they may want to participate or input or something, but it was mentioned, and I, I talked to a few people and listen to people that have attended, that do attend these. And I thought, I remembered what came up when I was doing pictures for the anniversary book. All of those churches, uh, those historic churches, plus um, the, other, uh, the other, at least two or three others that were uh, operational at that time, there are pictures in that anniversary book. So um, I just mentioned that. Uh, as I said, we had a lot of them, but there were three that I think you would consider really historic, okay? And then the other thing I wanted to mention, that looking at the, the list of positions, Intertribal Council, I didn't see it on there. I mean, let's face it, 200 years ago, uh, the original Americans were around and about. That's a good point. And uh, the contact person, I believe, is still Rusty Haskell in Berkeley. I think I gave that to you once before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and his sister, I think, is still here at I think she was still works at prime time. But anyhow, that um, was a total oversight anyway. We, uh, that's a really good point. We, um, they used to participate a lot in programs here on Memorial Days when we, we that's when we had the joint ones. Um, but also when we had the official opening of the old town hall, mm -hmm. uh, we did invite uh, uh, Mr. Haskell and uh, he did come and so that's, I think that's an important one we, we got to have in there. All right, thank, thank you. Nancy. Did you have anything else? No. Yes. No, okay. <laughs> Just you need to put some on. <laughs> yes, we, we will. It sounds like it's going to go on the next. Yeah, on the 29th of January. Okay. And also the department had one? Yes, yeah, like, okay. I, yeah, I, yeah, they're both beyond the 29th agenda. Okay. And, um, and uh, yeah, like, I have a, Oh, and I have a really good. I have a really good feeling you'll probably reach out to me on the twenty seventh, just just to give me a friendly reminder as well. Okay, okay, <laughs> I'll do that. And I won't be here on the 29th, so you'll have to handle okay. it on your own. That's fine. We can do that. Thank <laughs> you. Pat. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. All right. We'll go to announcements. Um, the town parking ban: no person shall park a motor vehicle 
between the hours of 12 midnight to 6 a.m. on any street from November 1st of each year to April 1st of the following year. Please take notice. The town of Dighton Food Bank will be held next on November 18th, located at the town hall, 979 Somerset Ave. This is in the lower level. The town of Dighton will be holding two public meetings on the same day to hear and learn from you, our residents, about what you feel can do, what you feel we can do to make our new library accessible to anyone who has a disability. While some disabilities are obvious, many are hidden, so it is critical to hear from you. This will be on Monday, November 27th. It will be at Old Town Hall, 111, 111, no, I always say 111. 1111, Somerset Ave, Dighton. Um, it's at 3 p.m. and then again it will be at 6 p.m. The Dighton Council on Aging received a license through the Massachusetts State Lottery to play bingo every Monday from 1 to 2 p.m. at the Dighton Council on Aging. 1059 Somerset Ave starting in October. Cards are one dollar. Please bring cash. Come and support the Friends of the Dighton Library and create a beautiful Christmas wreath. This is on Tuesday, December 5th at 6 p.m. Rudio Farms, 1522 William Street. The price is $45 per person. You can either stop by the farm and sign up um, and or you can pre, um, prepay for the class. Um, their phone number is 508 669 6988. Town administrator report. Uh, yes, uh, like I just I just actually have two quick things. The first, I want to really thank Tom uh, Cohen, um, the principal assessor, the treasurer, and the town clerk, who, um, who for probably the better part of the last, um, the better part of the last two to three weeks, have been, have been working, have been working day in and day out to get us here tonight to the fact rate hearing. Um, we have we have as we know a whole we have a whole new financial team. Um, uh, 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 I've been here for just under three years. We have Tana Cullen who's uh, who has, who has been here for just over a year now. Um, we we have a principal assessor who who has been here now for two years. We have a treasurer who has who has been with us for for the last year and a half. And we have and as we know we have a town clerk who has been with us for uh, for only a few months now. And the uh uh well, yeah, the work and the effort that oh yeah like actually heads into action <coughs> um uh uh uh, uh I like oh uh, yeah like everything uh, everything that goes into making tonight is possible. Oh uh, yeah like it's a huge behind the scenes effort. And yeah like we just have an awesome awesome awesome. Uh, 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 oh yeah we just have a great team. Oh we're gonna get better. And so I just uh 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 oh, yeah so. Uh, uh, yeah, so I just want to take a moment to recognize and thank them. Um, we also, as of, uh, yeah, we also, as of November 14th to December 14th, we have open enrollment for town and Dyke and retirees. Um, and, uh, 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 probably the week, probably the week, yeah, Probably the week after Thanksgiving, we're working on confirming it now, but we, uh, but uh, uh, but we will have an open enrollment meeting for all. We will have an open enrollment meeting for all town retirees, and so uh, I hope I uh, hopefully by the end of this week we'll have some information out on that as well. But uh, yeah, I think that's all I have on that tonight. Thank you. Yep. Um, we'll move on to the selectmen reports. Um, is not here, and I'm sad because I know solid waste there was going to be pizza, so I was hoping to hear about that, but we'll have to put that off till next time. Um, in regards to the Commission on Disability, we had our first meeting um, in quite some time. Um, we went over the KMA report. Um, all the members were given a copy, and they're going to review it in the next coming weeks before we meet again and kind of put down on a list of what we think are priorities from that report. That's all I have. Yes, thank you. Uh, this evening, the Dighton Water District 
set their tax rate. I might add it is down 32 cents from last year. Their tax split was 1.75. The residential rate will be $1.17. Um, and the commercial rate will be $2.28. I believe that's a thousand. Uh, based on $1,000 increments of property value. The last Wednesday, the Dayton Water District had, I'm sorry, last Thursday, the Dayton Water District had their fall special town meeting. Unfortunately, it was not well attended. Um, the, the one major expenditure was for the Cedar Street well. Um, it was appropriated um, $384,000 uh, from available cash toward the $582,000 cost for the rebuilding of the Cedar Street well. Um, that is in our water district. Last night, the school department met uh, they had the second reading of the parental notification on sex education. Um, there is going to be a slight change in the policy. And all parents will be required to sign in or opt out. So when you do receive your notice, if it should pass the third reading, very important that you respond to this. It'll make it easier on the school department so they don't have to chase down families to get a signature either to opt in or opt out. This program um, is coming down from the state. It is controversial and parents really need to pay close attention to the new curriculum that the state is putting forth. Um, the school committee also approved a highly successful, um, very prominent volleyball camp for Dayton Rehoboth Regional High School from July 29th to, uh, to August 2nd, and that will be the Ben, B-E-H-N, Volleyball Camp. The last item I'd like to talk about is MCAS results. At the Dighton Elementary School, Dighton Middle School, and at Dighton Rehoboth Regional High School. Um, it should be noted that, especially in the area of math, um, the Dighton students showed significant increase in performance. Uh, Dighton Elementary School, overall, their math score is improved by 10%. Uh, grade 8 uh, math scores improved by 12%. Uh, in the eyes of the state, anything 10 or above is significant. So we're seeing some very good progress. Um, at the high school, again, the overall increase, especially in the area of math, uh, was 10%, and overall, in ELA, science and math, Dighton Oak Regional High School saw a 10% increase above state average. In the area of English language art, te and this test is not easy. 10 students had perfect scores. In the area of math, one student had a perfect math, MCAS math score, and in science, two students had perfect MCAS M scores. So, credos need to go out to the principal of Dighton Elementary, Dighton Middle, Dighton Hobart Regional High School, and also to Superintendent Bill Rooney uh, and his, his team. Because good things are starting to come together in the Dighton Hobart Regional School District. Thank you. Okay, so I'm seeing no old business, no new business. Um, can I get approval of the warrants? Madam Chairman, I would like to make a motion 
that we pay the warrant for November 16, 2023. Item 21A-24 of $115,676.19. Item 21B-24, $373,180.85. I'll step down and second that. Um, can I get a vote? Aye. And aye. Um, correspondence, I have a letter from Robbie D'Souza with the recommendation to appoint Annabelle Powell as the temporary tenant board member. Um, from this letter, it is my understanding that no um, Lincoln Village tenants put in notice of intent to sit as um, Dighton Housing Authority town appointed tenant board member. That's a mouthful. <laughs> um, so the board had um, put forth a request for us to appoint Annabelle um, Powell, and she has held this position um, prior to the last resident, it says. Madam Chair, okay. this board established a policy several months ago. And in light of the problems that we had with it, I'm going to ask that we be consistent in our application of this policy. And with that, I would recommend that this be tabled to the 29th of November. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to accept the resignation of Lisa Mello as the library assistant with sincere thanks and appreciation for her service to the town. I'll step down and I'll second that. And can I get a vote? Aye. And then I'm an aye. Um, public input, do we have any public input? <laughs> Can you, you can go ahead and you can go first. Um, Laura Madera, 1645 Maple Street. I'm talking as more of a COA person than a resident. Um, we have exciting news. Our newsletter will be in color next month. Um, we just got them delivered, and they're going to be addressed and sorted and mailed out. But just a heads up, it is in color, and in January, we're going to have a whole new template to it. Um, so just to stay tuned for that. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> See that you're gonna get another one. Yeah, Nancy. Um, I this morning I attended by Zoom uh, a Gathic meeting. Gathic stands for the Greater Greater Attleboro Taunton Housing Consortium, and the main topic was the five-year plan that they were working on for housing. So there were two consultants present, and they had some questions about uh, different towns. And I mentioned that Dighton is working on updating their uh, affordable housing plan. Uh, they were aware of that, so I'm not sure who contacted them. But um, this housing plan uh, now will be finished up. There will be two public hearings uh, on this proposed housing plan before it gets sent to HUD. The date, times, locations will be announced and I will be sure to get that out. They usually have the hearings on the same day and it's usually morning in Middleborough and evening like 6 p.m. in Attleboro to get as many of the uh, communities that are in the Gaffic group to be able to send people and they have residents look at this. Um, there was also, dis also discussion about availability of affordable housing. I gave them a quick update on the housing. Strawberry Fields is tied up. Um, Forest Hills is tied up. Uh, Arbor Crest is sort of on hold right now, but we have uh, 240 Bs in the works, uh, and we have uh, Forest Hills. Um, one of the questions that came up was, was there any old property in town that could be rehabbed into affordable housing? I said, we have a large mill in the North End. It's not completely vacant, and it was going to be a grow facility. Uh, I don't know what happened to that, but 
that would be the only large piece of property like some of the cities have been able to convert into affordable housing. Um, so if, if uh, in doing our housing plan, if there is any kind of indication there might be any space up there, if they decide they're not going to become a growth facility, but they might consider affordable housing in a section, uh, obviously the consortium would like to know about it because there's funding available to rehab these kinds of properties. The other thing we talked about was the uh, former Dighton nursing home, but I believe those are all market units, so uh, there wouldn't be funding available for that. Um, but maybe when the housing plan is being looked at, or who, whatever board commission committee would do this, it might be worth looking into what used to be Dighton surplus. The building's been sitting vacant, it's old, don't know if it could be converted. Uh, there is quite a bit of land that goes with it, parking. Um, but if, in fact, somebody, committee, commission, whatever, is, could look into that, if there's any chance that that might be considered, uh, Gaffic would be able to help with purchase of it. And there could be funding also to help rehab it. Um, but it, it is, again, everyone's trying to find affordable housing. And uh, we don't have a lot of places in Dighton that you can do much with. So I just made all those notes. The other thing that was brought up, this has been brought up repeatedly and it never gets pursued. Expand the facilities at Lincoln Village. Mr. Howland, who made a presentation before your board earlier, said even several years ago, many years ago, he was involved with a group and they were looking to expand out back because there is woodland out there. And they wanted to put in more facilities, obviously on public water and sewer. That would help us with the 10%, wouldn't settle it, but it was, would certainly help it. But it seems like this never gets off the ground. So if we're gonna be looking at affordable housing, it might be worth finding out the expandability up there. Uh, I think anyone who's been there has looked through there and seen all that woods, and uh, if, a, if the property doesn't belong to the uh, council or whoever owns that facility technically, uh, property can be acquired. But again, if this is going to be looked at, keep Gaffic in mind because they're going to have funding available. Um, probably, we're guessing our next regular meeting to talk about budget and funding. It will be in December, we think, but they're waiting to find out what kind of money HUD is gonna be sending to uh, the consortium so that a budget can be put together and, and it can be broken down into, you know, the first home buyer's assistance, the rehabbing money, mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing. But um, th these are all things that could affect Dighton. And um, I said to the best of my knowledge, <clears throat> Excuse me. The only direct assistance residents have received are the first home, first time you buy a home, first time home buyers. And over the years, when I started going to the meetings, it was ten thousand, up to ten thousand. It's up to twenty-five thousand dollars now. So, some people have bought affordables in the forty Bs, um, and uh, that twenty-five thousand, if. Uh, up to 25 is approved, it can help, help pay closing costs and even help with the down payment. And if the person or the people stay in those homes long enough, they don't have to pay that back. So we have benefited from that, but um, uh, Gaffnick is always looking for places to spend money, and at times we had to, we've had to reallocate money because we couldn't come up with rehab property. So, I know that there's a lot of discussion and work being done in Dighton, but these are some things that, uh, if it comes down the pike, um, get in touch with Jim Howland. Uh, he can answer the questions, and, and if there's money out there that can be used, um, he's the man that would be able to help us with that. Um, I just wanted to mention Stormwater Committee meeting today. We are not gonna have a meeting on December 20th, uh, as last year, we didn't have a December meeting, however, uh, if something urgent comes up, we will schedule a meeting. Uh, our next regular meeting will be the third Wednesday in January. And right now, um, 
Things are sort of at a lull because our two close to completion, hopefully Brooks Street, uh, solar farms uh, are now uh, going to be reviewed. One is already under review by Weston and Sampson, and Clearway, which is the one behind Arujo's, will be similarly reviewed to make sure everything's okay, uh, everything storm water is okay, so that um, a clean recommendation can be made to the building commissioner that storm water's all set uh, with the Clearway project, and then he can take over as far as everything that he needs to for that project to go live. Uh, Mr. Cruz did report today. He's the he's been the manager up there, uh, and he did tell us today that all of the things he told us last month have been completed. Um, so uh, the next thing is we'll get, we'll have this review done. Uh, it will be paid for by them through a 53G account. And so right now things are a little quiet, so we decided that uh, we wouldn't schedule the December meeting. And in closing, I just want everybody to know, hopefully, <laughs> at lights on, in the pavilion, I'm going to have the calendars that the Stormwater Committee gives out every year. But these calendars are one of a kind, and hopefully this is going to continue. All the pictures in the calendar are pictures in Dighton. It's called Landscapes of Dighton. It's at BP, it's being printed right now. If I have enough, if I have some, I will give out what I get. Um, if they are unable to complete everything by uh, <laughs> a little over a week, um, I will get the complete order. They will be available, <clears throat> excuse me, they're free. It's part of our stormwater education program. They will be in both town halls. They will be at police, fire stations, uh, council on aging, um, two post offices. So if I don't have enough for everybody or if I don't get them in time, they will be available and we hope everybody gets a chance to grab a calendar. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so sorry to speak again, but I just wanted to <laughs> kind of piggyback. That was very informative about your meeting that you attended. Um, because of the extensive waiting list at Lincoln Village, um, like it's literally years long um, for a resident that would want to move in. Even if you fill out the emergency form, um, that has a very extensive wait list. We, through our um, department, had two residents at a very high risk of homelessness that we had to assist. So it's definitely an issue with affordable housing. Um, I'm speaking just from my experience with the seniors, um, but that's, I didn't know that they had that kind of money that they'd be able to offer for rehab pro uh, projects in town. So I would also recommend we do maybe, I don't know even what department that would go through, but there's absolutely a need, especially with the seniors. Um, obviously, living on very fixed incomes. Obviously the housing authority would have to be involved, but when I have raised this issue in the past, a number of times. The response I get is, oh, that's federal, and it's like you don't want to deal with them. Well, Gathic gets their money from HUD, which is federal, and Gathic is saying, Jim Holland said, I brought that up years ago when he was a resident, but he's also worked there for years. So if there's any way we can expand Lincoln Village and get financial assistance to do it, I don't care how much red tape there is with what agency, we need to pursue it because it's going to meet a need and it doesn't impact so much other facilities like schools and things. Mm -hmm. And it's a great service. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, there's nobody on Zoom, correct? No. All right. Um, move on to the approval of the minutes. Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of November 1st, 2023. I will step down and second that. Can I get a vote? Aye. And I am an aye. Um, Madam Chairman, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. I will second down. I will step, second down. I will step down and second that.